how good it is to be in the house of the Lord and watching wherever you are, you too are in the presence of Almighty God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice, hallelujah, and be glad in it. Oh, we're so glad you're here. We're so glad to know uh, that the people watching are growing in numbers and the people here are at home or in our sanctuary today. And God is so pleased that wherever you are, you find time to worship God. No pandemic can shut God out or shut God down. He will find a way to reach us. And so we thank you. We thank you. So good to see you. And now, our minister of music, her family, all of them musical, will bless us today in praise. Amen. How many know the Lord is a great God this morning? Come on, put your hands together. Glory and honor. Glory and honor, dominion and power. Now and forever, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth with power, forever with power. Greater than all you are, sovereign God. God, great God. Worthy of honor and glory, we will stand here in reverence, blessed in your presence, Jehovah, forever and ever our God. Come on, we'll sing it one more time. Glory and honor. Glory and honor, dominion and power. Now and forever, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth with power, forever with power. Greater than all you are, sovereign God, God, great God, worthy of honor and glory. We stand here in reverence, blessed in your presence, Jehovah. Forever and ever our God. How many know we serve a great God this morning? There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than my God. Greater than my God. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than my God. Great God. Great God. God. Great God. Worthy of honor and glory. We stand here in reverence. Blessed in your presence, Jehovah, forever and ever, our God. Please bow your heads for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to come into your house and worship. We take it not lightly that you allowed us to be here this morning, and we thank you for your presence that's here with us. We ask you to bless each and every one that's at home watching today and bless everyone that's here in this building, Father. And we just thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. We thank you for the word that's coming forth this morning. And we thank you that you'll open our hearts so we'll receive it. In Jesus' name, we thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Give myself away I give myself away So you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can 
It's not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself to you. Come on, say it with us. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Give myself away. I give myself away. Myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use I give myself away. I give myself away. Glory, glory to God. Will you come with us now to our scripture lesson for today? Our scripture lesson is found in the Old Testament book of Job. Come with me, Job, Job, chapter 38. Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 10 and 16 through 18. Job chapter 38, verses 1 through 10 and verses 16 through 18. And listen now, listen for the word of the Lord. From out of a storm, the Lord said to Jacob, why do you talk so much when you know so little? Now get ready to face me. Can you answer the questions that I ask? How did I lay the foundation for the earth? Were you there? Doubtless you know who decided the length and the width, who supports the foundation. Who placed the cornerstone while morning stars sang and angels rejoiced? 
When the ocean was born, I set its boundaries, said God, and wrapped it in blankets of thickest fog. Then I, said God, I built the wall around it. I locked the gates and said, your power, your powerful ways stop here, and they can go no further. 16 through 18, Job, have you ever walked on the ocean floor? Have you seen the gate to the world of the dead? And how large is the earth? Tell me, Job, if you know. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. After the singing of the next song, the sermon title is, Don't Mess with God. to the Lord, for he is good, for he is good. Come on, join us. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For he is good. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. For he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. For he is good, yes, he is good. For he is good, he is good, yes, he is good. For he is good, yes, he is good. For he is good, yes, he is good. For he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is good. Yes, he is good. How many know the Lord is good today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. For everything you've done. I just want to thank you, I just want to thank you, you Lord. A sermon topic, don't mess with God. Don't mess with God. As we look into the book of Job, we're going to hear about how we got to the situation where God was so upset with Job. So we're going to trace that and see how it, how it must have happened. In the beginning, the book of Job is a wonderful book. You need to read it for yourself. The story in the book of Job is about a man who God says was the greatest, most righteous man he knew. In the beginning, we find God in a meeting with the angels. And in walks the devil. God in a meeting with the angels and in walks the devil. And God asks the devil, Satan, what are you doing here? And Satan says, I, I've just been walking around the earth seeing who I might devour. And since I've done such a good work at that, I thought I'd come to the meeting. God said, oh, oh, it sounds to me like you're saying, sounds like you're saying it's been easy to trick my people into believing in you, Satan. Sounds to me like you said you, you didn't have to give out much energy to get my people to come to your side. You went in their homes, you went in their church, you went in their businesses, you went in their schools, and you found them, and you attracted them to your evil way. He says, oh, I guess you're here to make a report. But I'm not going to imagine your report finished, Satan, until you try one more person. I got somebody. God says, oh, I have somebody for you, say. I have somebody who lives the life of a Christian. I, I have somebody who doesn't just read the word, but is a doer of the word. I have somebody who will praise me no matter what. He is the most righteous man I have. And his name is Job. Satan, have you tried my servant, Job? And Satan said, well, of course, he's righteous, and of course, he's good to you, God. Why wouldn't he praise you, God? You've, you've given him everything. You've given him mansions. You've given him cars. You've given him servants. You've given him a wife and children, and you are the wealthiest man in the land. He's the wealthiest man in the land. Why wouldn't he worship you, God? God says to Satan, I am going to allow you. Hmm, isn't that interesting? I am going to allow you, Satan, to go and tempt Job, but I will not allow you to take his life. Sounds like God has a chain around the devil's neck. He can go so far, Satan, but no further. And so it happened. The devil went into the presence of Job, into Job's territory, into 
Job's house and to Job's family. The house burned down. All the cattle died. His wife finally died. All of his children died. And Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. David said, mm. So then Job became so ill because Satan ripped, I haven't attacked his health like I should. <laughs> I, I just attacked his things and his family. Let me see if I attack him. And so Satan, Satan created a disease on Job's body that was so painful, so ugly, boiled, filled with inflammation and all over Job's body. The Bible gets so graphic with this experience because God wants us to really hear this message. The Bible says that the dog came and tried to heal his wounds with their tongue. Job said, Oh God, even if you slay me, then will I praise your name. Well, then some of his friends started coming around. Messing with Job, even though he was so sick. Friends started coming around. They didn't even remember some of the ugly things his wife had said. The, the friends and the wife had said some of the worst things that anybody could say to Job. All offbeat. All, all not true. All wrong. Listen, beloved, you have to be careful who you surround yourself. People say blood is thicker than water. Is that what they say? I know some blood kin that I don't want around me. Help me up in here, somebody. The only blood that's thicker than anything is the blood of Jesus Christ. Keep your body, your mind, your soul covered with the blood of Jesus. His family said, oh, come on, come on, come on, Job. Confess your sin. This is happening to you because you have done something. Job, you did something that don't nobody know about but you. And it must have been really bad for God to be doing this to you. Why don't you just confess your sin before God so he'll stop all of this? They were wrong. They were wrong because they weren't spiritual. They were wrong. They were wrong because they didn't have a discerning spirit. You see, they were, they were wrong because a child of God will discern the situation. And in discerning it, you ask, is this happening to me because of something I did? Is it happening to me because of something the devil did? Is it happening to me because of something God is doing? See, you can't just blame what's happening to you in life on the devil. Hallelujah. You can't just say the devil made me do it. It may be you and it may be God. You have to discern what's going on in my life. So the friends talked about him, dogged him out, started gossiping about him. I just want to say to people who talk about a child of God, I just want to say to people who talk about a child of God, 
you better watch your mouth. Hallelujah. You better be careful when you dogging a child of God. You better be careful when you're saying things, talking things that you don't know. You better be careful. Because God says no weapon formed against a child of his will prosper. We are the head, not the tail. We're always above and not beneath. Be careful when you talk about a child of God. And so the story goes on, and there were times in Job's life when his humanity, like ours, took reign. One time in the beginning, Job said, you know, I don't even know why I was born. I wish I had just not been born. And I wish if I was born, I had been born dead. Job said, I, I don't know why I'm going through all of this. I don't understand. I've been a good person. Why, why is this happening to me? That's a question, you know, the world still asks today. Why do good things happen? Why do bad things happen to good people? That's the question people ask. Why do bad things happen to good people? As if those of us who say we good won't suffer. We're always wondering, why me? When the question is, why not me? <laughs> Nobody is so good that they don't suffer. All of us have been promised that we shall have trials and tribulations. And remember, God's only son suffered, bled, and died. Why Jesus? So it got to the point where Job just kind of gave up. And Job said, you know, I just can't. God, I'm asking you why. Oh, Lord, I'm asking you what's going on. Lord, I'm telling you, I can't take much more of this. <laughs> and you not saying nothing. God, where are you? Have you ever thought that, God, where are you? God, do, do I love you more than you love me? Where are you, God? Where are you? Answer my question. Say something. Say something. And God remained silent. You know, when I think about God, see, the personalities are different. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Okay, I, I don't have time to go into all that. But their personalities are different. God is the one we don't want to mess with. Oh, help me up in here, somebody. It's like when your mama say, wait till your daddy get home. Hallelujah, that's why they call him father. God doesn't play with us like that. God is God. God will have the last word. God does it his way and in his time. And we live in a world today that simply does not Fear God. They say the beginning of wisdom is fear of God. I don't feel, I don't fear people, but I do fear God. Oh, yes, I do. Because he chastises those whom he loves. I fear God. I reverence God. I don't want to do anything that would upset my God. And today he's checking our, our obedience, our willing to be obedient. Because remember, the first sin was the sin of disobedience. The sin of even though you told me not to, uh, the devil said, that ain't what you said. Even though you told me not to, it sure did look good to me. Even though you said no, I don't understand why you would say no to me, God. So I'll say yes. It never works with God. It never works with God. You look 
we look at the world today when people have decided they don't want to be a Christian. Uh, they don't want to go to worship. Uh, they don't want to hear the priest's word. Uh, they don't want to be obedient to it. They don't want, they don't want, they don't want, they don't want. I, I, me, my, I want it my way. Not gonna happen. We spend more time with what we want and who we like and what we like than we do with God. We pay attention to everything. Our house, our car, our money, our clothes. And we ignore God. I heard someone say the other day, with all of the things going on in the world, in the weather, the pandemic, oh, people breaking down today, the depression, the loss of sanity, the evil running rampant. What did we think God was going to do? What did we think God was going to do? This is his. We are his creation. We are to be impressed by him. You can't impress God. He's God. So we spend our time impressing people rather than trying to be impressed by God. The thing to learn in this message is when we really really, truly know who God is, then and only then will we know who we are not. Mm. Mm. In some countries, every, every country worships something. In, in America, we worship, you know, the movie stars and the, and the, and the athletes and, and all that, that we worship them. Oh, we clap for them, we worry about them, we cheer for them. Oh, hallelujah. But back in, in African culture where everything started, they looked up to those who represented God. Who represents God today? Who did God send your way? They say that leaders are leaving the church because it's so painful today. God spoke to Job in his own way. You know what he did? It's easy. You know what God did? <laughs> See, God says, when your attention is everywhere else, I got to do something really, really, really unheard of to get some Behavioral modification. The world will ignore me. <laughs> In the Bible, God said, Job, before I speak to you, I'm going to get your attention. And so what did God do? He sent a tornado, a thunderstorm. He sent COVID-19. What do I have to do to get your attention? And so in the midst of this pandemic, you know what? I hear God's voice louder than I ever heard. And so the Bible says, this is the reading for the, the Bible says, the Lord speaks from out of a storm. The Lord is speaking today. When all the weather says, it never happened like this before, when hundreds of thousands of people have died and the pandemic is not just, it's a pandemic because it's just not the flu in America. Oh, no. It's all over the world. Everybody. Everybody. And we might think we don't know how it happened and who created and all that, but I know God will use what the enemy meant for evil and turn it into good. God is speaking. God is speaking today. And so from out of the storm, from out of a storm, the Lord said to Job, 
Why do you talk so much when you know so little? Oh, it sounds like one of the parents I grew up with. I know that's right. Hallelujah. Now get ready to face me. Can you answer the questions I asked, Job? How did I lay the foundation for the earth? Were you there? Oh, doubtless you know who decided this length and width. What supports the foundation? Who placed the cornerstone? Why morning stars sang and angels rejoices? When the ocean was born, I set its boundaries and wrapped it in blankets of thick fall. Then I built a wall around it and locked the gates and said, your powerful ways stop here. They can go no further. Job, Job, have you ever walked on the ocean floor? Have you seen the gate to the world of the dead? And how large is the earth? Tell me, Job, if you know so much. And the thing is, you have to read it when you go home. Because this is the true character of God. He's not playing with us. You know who's playing with us? Jesus have a little sympathy. And your mama might have a little sympathy, but your daddy don't play. Listen here, listen here. Read it. Chapter 38, God's talking. Chapter 39, God's talking. Chapter 40, God continues to talk. The Lord continues. Chapter 41, the Lord continues. Ah. Uh, and so then Job, Job said, oh, God. See, this is where God's trying to get us, our attention back on him, our worship back on him, our praise back on him, our asking for forgiveness back. Job said, no one can oppose you. I'm sorry, no one, no one can oppose you. A lot, I had just gotten a little out of line. No one can oppose you because you have the power. You have the power to do what you want to do. God, you have the power to do it any way you want to do it. You told me to listen. He said, but I heard you from others, and now I see you with my own eyes. <laughs> and Job said, that's why I hate myself, Lord, and I just sit here in dust and ashes to show my sorrow. Then the Lord went and talked to his friends, and then Job talked about how they had hurt him and how his wife had said to him, Job, you so silly. If I were you, I would have cursed God and just died. He said, I learned a lot of things. You know what I learned? My wife only loved me for what I had. <laughs> and she didn't even know you. I learned a lot of things. I learned that my friends wasn't saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. They were lying all the time. And so the Lord said, what I want you to do is, is pray for all those who were not there for you. I want you to pray for all those who hurt you. I want you to pray for those who gave you the wrong answers. I want you to pray. I want you to pray for everybody who in the midst of all of your trouble turns their back on you. I want you to pray for them. Oh, I love God. <laughs> I love God. And after Job had prayed, the world says, for his three friends and others, the Lord made Job twice. As rich as he had ever been before. <laughs> Lord, I'm telling you, ain't nothing like getting a reward from God. Everything is worth it. In the end, when God comes to bless us for just being faithful. Job even gave a feast for his brothers and his sisters and for his old friends. Oh, look at that. Oh, God says, I will prepare a table before you. Oh, and your enemy is going to come to the party and watch how I'm going to bless you. Oh, they expressed their sorrow for the suffering the Lord had brought on Job, and they each gave Job some silver and a gold ring. The Lord now blessed Job more than ever. He gave him 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 pair of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. Sometimes we just need to praise God through it all. And all of us can praise God when we feel good. But I'm talking about on your deathbed, when you don't know if you're going to make it. 
just, just we need to praise God in the hard times, in the rough times. Because what we need to understand is many times we fight in a battle that's not our battle. This was God. This was God, and th this was between God and Job. And what Job realized in the end was, this battle, this battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. Oh, what a pressure it takes off of us. What a joy. To say, Lord, I trust you. I know you got me. And no matter what happens to me, I'm going to praise your name until I come forth as pure gold. Oh, you have to realize how much heat goes, uh, goes through to become, to become pure. Lord, I know you'll never give me more than I can bear, even if I fail. Lord, I know whatever the devil meant for evil, you're going to turn it into good. God, I know that you will take care of me no matter what. God, I know that in my life, you will say to me, if I love you, well done. It won't matter what your family says. It won't matter what your friends say. It won't matter what anybody in the neighborhood says or even in the church to hear God say, this battle, God, is not mine. This battle is yours. And you will fight it your way. But you won't let it keep you. This battle. Beloved, many times what we need to understand is this. Exhale. Just, just breathe it in and let it go. Just walk in it and let it go. Oh, God, we need you. Let's go out in this song. Raise your hands and worship God. Oh, God, no matter what you're doing, I love you. Oh, God. No matter how bad it hurts, I love you. Oh, God. There is nobody greater. There is nobody greater. There is nobody greater. This battle. This battle. This battle. Is not mine. It's the Oh, give there the Lord our praise. There is no hurt. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus can feel. Hallelujah. Come on. There is no pain. Hallelujah. That the master can heal. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For all things work. Oh. According, According to the master's perfect will. And his perfect will. Oh. So no matter what. No matter what. You're going, you're going through. through. <laughs> know that God is know that only God you. is only using you. He knows you strong For enough. The battle. To trust him in trouble. He knows it's you got yours. the faith. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Oh, Lord, this is not my battle. It's the Lord. I'm going to give it to you. Knowing you're going to take care of me in the end. I'm going to give it to you. So Hallelujah. And in my time, I'm going to praise you. <laughs> With my time, I'm going to honor you. Hallelujah. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. The Lord. It's the Lord. Oh, glory to your name. It's the Lord. It is. It's the Lord. 
it is the Lord. The Lord. Oh, no matter what, no matter what you're going through, you're going through. God is only. Yes, He is. You. He's only using you because you're the best thing He can find. No matter what. <laughs> You're Can't find nobody through. stronger than you. <laughs> God Hallelujah. Is only Hallelujah. Using you. For the battle. This battle. Is not yours. It's not yours, beloved. It's, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Oh, give the Lord a hand praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's so worthy. When you're going through, just, just think about Job. Say, God, I didn't know I was meant that much to you. <laughs> God, you're not attacking me because I'm weak. You're attacking me because I'm strong. Hallelujah, God. Oh, Lord. The question today from Job is, can God trust you with trouble? Ooh. Ah, he can't use some people. Y'all look at some people and say, you ain't in trouble because God can trust you with trouble. Hallelujah. He's using you to be a testimony about how a Christian can stand. He's just, he's just testing you. God, you're so good and so strong and so loyal and so faithful. He's just testing you. Oh, don't you know? At the end of the story, Job's friends, his enemies, and his family, everybody said, wanted to say, Job, whatever you got, I've been through stuff, and I still ain't got nothing. But Job, whatever you got, I want it. And Job would say, the Lord is my God, and I will praise and worship him. Everywhere and in any situation. Hallelujah. Praise his name today. Is communion Sunday all for all over the whole world. All Christians everywhere are celebrating the Lord's Supper. Some of us call it the Eucharist, as others of us call it. But in our tradition, every first Sunday, there are some churches that do it every Sunday. In our tradition, we have first Sunday set aside to remember. Just keep this on the table. All, this is all God wants you to to do. This, this is all God wants us to do right now. It, all of this may be happening because we forgot it. <laughs> Remember. Remember. And so before Jesus went to the cross, he gathered his disciples and he's the one who began Holy Communion. And he said, as a symbol of my body, that I'm going to have broken. He pillaged and destroyed just for you. Remember. And then Jesus said, you will see me bleeding. Then when you say, my poor in my body. There will be no word for the pain. But remember, my blood was shed for you. For you. God said, I can't be in relationship with them until their sins are washed. And that animal stuff, that's not good enough. 
their sins are so bad, I need perfection to become sin. So Jesus is saying to each of us today in this communion, just remember, I am the bread of life. Remember, I am the blood of the new covenant. And so if you have your communion kits, invite you to open them now. The blood that Jesus shed for you. And just remember. 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 That the blood that Jesus shed. Come on now. Where? Way back on Calvary, is still that same blood today. The blood. And now I invite you. Shed for you and for me. Amen. Any way you took it is good enough. We all need today. Lord, I ask that you would send your healing power. Oh, Jesus. In this building and through all the visual screens, your healing power. Jesus wants to heal you today. Because his blood and his body will never, ever lose its power. The doors of God's church are open. If there are those of you who would like to join the church, we invite you now to come. You can join virtually, or you can walk down the aisle, but we want you to come, knowing that this is the day and this is the time for us to get ourselves together, to get ourselves in line with God. I don't want to die today, but I'll tell you what, because I know him, because I've been initiated into his heavenly being through baptism. I'm ready. I'm equipped. I know where I'm going. Do you? Do you know where you're going, little? I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready. And now as we leave this service, I pray that each of you will be blessed, restored, renewed, covered, saved, and protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray it in the name of Jesus, and I pray it through God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us all say, Amen. 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 God bless you.